So uh, right now we're in Kyrgyzstan, a small landlocked country in the middle of Central Asia. And we're just outside the capital Bishkek in Ala Aksha National Park. We're going to the top of this mountain right now to play a traditional Kyrgyz song. <laughs> Okay, so why is Jared Yee playing Careless Whisper on a mountaintop in Kyrgyzstan? Well, recently I got back from a three-week tour of Central Asia with five members of the horn band Aberdeen as part of American Music Abroad, a cultural diplomacy program funded by the U.S. State Department to promote American music and American culture overseas. In other words, the footage that you just saw was quite literally jazz propaganda funded by the American government. <laughs> There is a lot more to this story, believe it or not. Let me explain. American Music Abroad is a direct descendant of similar tours that the government would fund in the 1950s and 1960s where jazz greats like Louis Armstrong and Dave Brubeck and Duke Ellington were sent around the world to play jazz to promote American interests during the height of the Cold War. These jazz ambassadors aimed to counteract Soviet cultural influence, but the image of these mixed-race bands playing African-American music contrasted bitterly with the racial divides of the Jim Crow South at the time, something that the Soviet press was all too eager to highlight. But the musicians also showed America a land of contradictions at its best. Intrepid, independent, multicultural, and free. Now, the Cold War is done, but public diplomacy programs still exist to promote American music overseas, like, for example, the music of Aberdeen, an instrumental jazz rock band that is very much steeped in the musical culture of New York City. I've been playing with them for uh, about two or three years now. Political scientist Joseph Nye has said that in today's information age, politics is about whose story wins. American Music Abroad, and by extension the State Department, thought that the story that Aberdeen had to tell was one worth telling as a vignette of American culture overseas. We would be doing the same thing that Duke Ellington and his band did in a previous era. We would be modern day jazz ambassadors. <laughs> Our first stop on this tour was Kyrgyzstan. Now, after the fall of the Soviet Union, various Turkic peoples broke off into what we affectionately call the Stans. Kyrgyzstan, as it stands right now, is at a crossroads, trying to assert its own national identity while still being deeply influenced by its Soviet past. Come on, it writes itself. <laughs> the Pentagram Park is sponsored by Coca-Cola. <laughs> The best part about this park is it's literally a block away from that giant statue of Lenin. It's such a weird like combination of like the post-Soviet and like American capitalist. Panfilov Park is in the center of the capital of Bishkek, where we kicked off the tour with a couple of concerts collaborating with local band Churro Band at venues like the U.S. Ambassador's residence. as well as, believe it or not, a co-working space in downtown Bishkek. Now earlier I joked that we were engaged in jazz propaganda, but I want to tread lightly with that term for the rest of this video. Because American culture, and by extension the musical life that I live in New York, is treated with a fair amount of suspicion in many parts of the world. After the concerts in Bishkek, we flew down to the city of Osh in the south of Kyrgyzstan. Outside of Osh is Aravan, a small town on the Uzbek border. Good, good, good. But our main goal in Kyrgyzstan was youth outreach. We'd be conducting a series of workshops for students enrolled in Access Micro, a program designed to teach English to students who wouldn't normally be able to afford it. A goal with these workshops was to get to know the kids and have them get to know us, as well as trying to get them to understand the music that they liked. Does anybody have any favorite songs? Very often the music that they liked was Bruno Mars, Bruno Mars. American pop music, specifically Uptown Funk. Go. Visiting from the United States, we have the band Aberdeen. Go. All you need to know to play this. Right. Awesome, good job. 
That's my job, going bald. The jazz ambassadors of the 1960s brought American culture to the world, but when American pop music is so ubiquitous, why were we in Kyrgyzstan? Ethnomusicologist Kendra Selwa notes that audiences lack not American musical products, but experience with actual Americans. This is the first time these kids had hung out with American musicians, and as tired as I am of playing uptown funk in wedding bands, the song has a new important meaning for me now that I've played it in the Kyrgyz countryside. Who knew? Uptown funk is the universal language. Public diplomacy is becoming less national. Governments have always had their own interests in mind, but when practicing public diplomacy, they increasingly emphasize common interests. In other words, Uptown Funk. What's your name so, again? What's your name? Um, I'm Amory from Mars. Great, from yeah. Mars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't have to do Kyrgyzstan was an amazing experience. The people were so hospitable, and outside of the concerts and the workshops, we got to experience local culture, and some of which was fairly adventurous. Here we go. Me and VJ are going to try fermented mare's milk for the first time. Here we go. Oh, Ooh, yeah, you guys are yeah, 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 okay. But soon our time in Kyrgyzstan was done, and so after an insane lobby call, we took a 4 a.m. flight from Bishkek to our next destination, Mongolia. Mongolia, land of Genghis Khan, follows what's called a third neighbor foreign policy. It's entirely landlocked by Russia and China, so it looks often to other countries to provide a cultural and trade counterbalance. But because it's so small, foreign bands rarely get the chance to visit. Foreign bands like Aberdeen. And actually it's a band from New York. Uh -huh. The name is called Aberdeen. Our visit was featured on an English language Mongolian news show. I'm about ready to do a television interview. I heard that you came to Mongolia to a music diplomacy program called American Music Abroad. Our main goal in Mongolia was collaboration with amazing local musicians from a variety of different styles and traditions. We also collaborated with Beatbox Ray and uh, Dulu, uh, percussionist, as well as the Red Line. Uh, Rock, a Mongolian rock band. <laughs> we just finished playing with the Red Line Boys. They held public concerts and played gigs, and uh, the most important part was uh, having workshop and master classes with uh, students. Yeah, that's really, really nice. Mongolia is a small country, only three million people, but it has a deeply rich musical tradition. Many people in the West are familiar with humi, or throat singing. <laughs> But there are other fascinating traditions that aren't as well known in the West, like, for example, something called long song. There's also a rich ensemble tradition that features the Murn Kur, a two-stringed horsehead fiddle that's tuned F and B flat. We got a chance to collaborate with a Yalku band, a children's ensemble that features the Murn Kur. I got a chance to play one, and it's actually a lot harder than it looks because you don't actually press the string down to the fingerboard as you play it. There's also the bass version, the Eek Core, which is tuned down an octave and actually plays a lot more similarly to a Western contrabass. And yes, in case you're wondering, you can play the lick on it. Cool, and you are uh, being here in Mongolia as a cultural ambassador as well. We spent a while rehearsing Aberdeen's music, as well as other music, with a wide variety of musicians in preparation for a big concert at the Children's Palace in downtown Ulaanbaatar, the capital. The Children's Palace is this old, like, communist-era building. It has all sorts of kind of interesting nooks and crannies and passages, including uh, my own entrance. Pretty sure that's what it says. Let's see, Bess. Uh -huh. Is tonight's concert going to be 
lit. It's gonna be so lit. The performance at the Children's Palace last night was really, really quite memorable. Now you'd be amazed at how easy it is to rehearse with musicians who don't speak your language. Music isn't a universal language, but among skilled musicians, it can be a lingua franca, a common tongue. This performance was amazing, and there's gonna be more footage of it that comes out later, but a real highlight of the tour for us was our last performance at the Fat Cat Jazz Club, the big jazz club in Lawn Batar. The last day uh, before the departure, uh -huh. they had a gig at Fat Cat uh, Jazz Club. There's a really awesome musical scene at that club that we just fell in love with. And we spent most of our time off actually hanging out at the jam session after hours doing the real public diplomacy work, speaking the true universal language of the hang. There's one moment in particular at the last gig where all of the joy and excitement that we had from hanging out with all these amazing people and musicians just kind of overflowed on stage. that we were playing is called BK and Y, Brooklyn, New York, where we live. And it was just a special moment to be able to share that with people on the opposite side of the world. Now, in the information and disinformation age, there's nothing stopping people from learning about where I live, but it's these moments in time where we're making music in the flesh and sharing in a moment where I feel the real cultural diplomacy actually might happen. Joseph Nye notes that when information is plentiful, the scarce resource is attention. If there is empathy there, it can be a real bridge between people and cultures. So we have a little bit of a sing-along. It's pretty easy. Here's how it go. We'll be singing this song until the end. We'll be singing this song feel a real civic duty, really, to promote the idea that music is a means of connecting people on a deeper level. It's not something that you just listen to, it's not something that you do, it's a shared expression of humanity, really. You would think, with the current administration's view on soft power and diplomacy, that these kinds of programs would be cut. But it turns out that it's a lot cheaper to send musicians overseas than soldiers, and so funding for these programs have actually increased in the past couple of years, thankfully. Duke Ellington, our forebear, the person whose footsteps we are following in, would say that if jazz means freedom, then jazz means peace. Because peace can only come to mankind when man is free. <laughs> song. It's called Ulan Batarin Udesh, or Ulan Batar Nights. You know, if you're watching this video and you find the sort of thing too saccharine or too twee, I, I don't blame you. It does kind of have a kumbaya kind of vibe to it right now, but 
One of the things in music making that we're inundated by in education and popular media is the idea that music should be a form of self-expression, but we're not really exposed to the idea of music as a community building thing. And I feel like that's a real disservice to what music can do and really what the point of music is. It's not purely about the glorification of self, it's about building a community. And this tour, more than anything else for me in my life, has really shown that. I want to give another shout out to the musicians that we collaborated with on this tour. The musicians of Redline, those guys are awesome. Beatbox Ray, Dulal, a Yalgu band, as well as all of the people of Kyrgyzstan and Mongolia for their absolutely amazing hospitality. I also want to give a shout out to the U.S. embassies in Mongolia and Kyrgyzstan, as well as American Music Abroad, and our translator Kielbeck in Kyrgyzstan, he was awesome too. I love you. <laughs> this was an amazing experience, and I cannot wait to do something similar again. I cannot wait again to serve as a jazz ambassador. <laughs> fan that was messaging us. Him and his friend have real books for us to sign. No. Yes! <laughs> I like how my reaction was yes and everybody else's reaction was no. <laughs> one second. One second. All the time. Okay. Okay, sure. What's good? Because Ryan's. Okay, all right. And Adam's first real book. Oh my, oh my god! god. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes! Oh my god! Oh my god!